Hey everyone, I wanted to talk a little bit today about BitFocus Companion. It's actually a pretty popular piece of software that a lot of people use to control their ATEM switchers. And it's got a lot of features in there that make it very appealing. And I know, I know there's a lot of people out there that are using it. It's, it, it. it's a piece of software that comes up in a lot of conversations when you're talking about ways to control not just the ATEM switchers, but other video production hardware as well. So I've kind of I kind of embraced it starting September-ish last year. So I've been using it for eight, nine, ten months, somewhere in there. And for me to say that it has gone well would be inaccurate, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, it has been quite problematic for me. And I wanted to kind of give people another perspective. Like There's a ton of, ton of videos out there that are praising this, this software. It's, it's amazing, can do no wrong. And my experience with it has been very much the, op the opposite. And I wanted to kind of give everybody a heads up. Who might be thinking about using it that it it's not everything might be rosy and perfect with this software uh so i'm going to talk about uh, three different scenarios where it failed me big time and caused me serious problems and maybe those are situations that someone can avoid uh by not relying on on the software so uh Give you a kind of a little overview of some of the stuff that I've got going on with my configuration here So let's go to an overhead shot and it's gonna be a little bit hard to see here, but So on this first screen I have or it's not in the first screen, but on the screen here I have some buttons to control my seven different HyperDeck studios so a red button here indicates that the device is recording and so if I press the button here Well, it's not working <laughs> Great, first failure right as as I'm trying to demonstrate it. So, yeah, as I hit the button to record and nothing's happening. So, anyway, it's already screwed up on me here just as I'm trying to demo it for the first time. Anyway, so I've got buttons on here that are meant to record my, to control my HyperDeck Studio minis uh, and then a HyperDeck Studio uh, Pro I have in the mix as well. And that leads me to one of the first failures that I wanted to talk about. So, I was recording a community event here a few weeks ago and after we came back from intermission I pressed my buttons on here to start recording they turn red so I think everything's fine and we move on with the event and 10 minutes later I just turned around to look with my own eyes to see if their hyperdecks were recording and they were not and then I went to go check to see what's going on with the with the companion and the stream deck and the buttons indicated that it was recording but it was actually not and started pressing buttons to try and do things and the software had crashed it's like it does to me pretty much every time I use it. So I lost 10 to 15 minutes of a client recording because Companion said I was recording when it was not. Very embarrassing. No easy way to recover from that. Both my primary and backup recordings had not started because I was using Companion to do it, and it didn't work. It failed. All right. Failure number two. And this one happened a few months ago. I was shooting a an award show for a film festival, fairly high profile event, quite a few people watching. A uh, client that I've worked with for years trusts me to do a good job uh, with all the things that I get hired for. And actually, I happened to record what happened. So I have a video here of what's going on with my multi-view output on my ATM switcher. And so I'll just start playing this a little bit. And you notice in the upper right, there is a white box around the program feed. That's normal, completely normal. It's always supposed to be that way. And there, it just switched to green. The, the colored box wasn't the problem. The problem what happened here is my switcher actually locked up. It became completely unresponsive. It wasn't responding from Companion. It wasn't responding from Just Macros. The front panel on the device was not working. ATEM software control was not working. None of the ways that you use to control the ATEM switcher were working at that point. And I know people are going to say it probably wasn't Companion. Well, I mean, I can't say with 100% certainty that it was, but that was the only new variable that I had brought into the mix. This was the first time that I was actually running Companion while I was working for a paid client. I've always been a little bit hesitant to hesitant because it has always crashed on me every time I use it, without exception. And so I, I was a little bit hesitant to try and use it when I'm working for a paid paying client. This time I decided to gamble, take a risk, and then about two-thirds of the way through the event, my switcher locked up. I had to reboot it, which took the stream down for that 30 seconds where it was rebooting. Hugely embarrassing. 
the client was understanding, but you never want to admit that kind of failure. You never want that to happen to you, especially when you're working on an event that's public and people are going to see and you're going to be judging you for it. And where the the produce or the on-air talent actually specifically calls out your company and gives you a plug for for doing your work, and then all of a sudden you fail during the middle of the event. Not good. Very much not good. But that really pales in comparison to the event, to the failure that happened to me just a few days ago. So I want to show you part of, part of my configuration I have on here. So on a lot of my screens on my stream deck, I have a button here that's labeled IFBA. What that does is when I press that, that op opens up my microphone from my intercom so that I can talk to on-air talent. So in this case, we were producing a video for a Hollywood celebrity that somebody, everybody on the stream would know and they came on to the Zoom call and I press the button to talk to them, let go of the button and we start the interview and I think everything's fine. Two minutes, or two, two or three minutes into the interview, talent stops and says, I gotta stop, I'm hearing everybody talking. What, what had happened was companion had crashed after I pressed the IFBA button, leaving my microphone open in his ear. So he was hearing me talking to the person that was here in the trailer or helping me with the event and it was distracting. He couldn't hear the person that was interviewing him. Very, very embarrassing. And could be the basis of me not ever working for that client again. Terrible situation. And it came, to, it came down to companion. The, this individual stopped the interview and said he was hearing me. Looking, I started looking around press the button on here, stream deck, and companion completely unresponsive, and then I go to the computer that is running the software and I get this pop-up here. So the software had crashed, completely crashed. And when it crashed, it left my microphone open instead of closing it when I released the button. So terribly embarrassing, terrible situation. So uh, yeah, basically, at this point, I am no longer going to be able to trust Companion when I'm working for paying clients. I just can't risk having a situation like that happen again, you know. Not only do I risk losing a customer, I could also find myself in a situation where I got a lawsuit where I'm not capturing an event that I'm being paid to do so, and it's something we can't recreate. You know, it's a one-time one -time deal, and I've let them down. So I can't risk that moving forward. So at this point... I will no longer be using BitFocus Companion anytime I'm working for a paying client. When I'm doing videos here for my YouTube channel, sure, or when I'm just goofing off or whatever, if I'm doing a freebie for somebody, that's something else. You know, I, I won't mind. I won't mind trying it in those situations. You know, because if if the video doesn't come out, not that big of a deal. But from this point on, if I'm working for a paying client, I will not be using Companion any longer. I just can't risk that. I can't. I can't risk losing customers and potential lawsuits over failing to do my job, especially in high prof high profile situations like uh, two of the three that I just mentioned. So anyway, um, so that's just, I'm just going to put that out there. I'm not going to say that it's going to be bad for everybody, but this is, this software has failed me very badly numerous times. And for anybody else who's in my situation where you're working for high, prof high profile clients, who are very discerning and will not tolerate anything going wrong, you probably do not want to have this in your mix of, of tools that you're using. You know, as professionals, we have a certain level of, of performance that we're expected to live up to, and our tools have to be just as reliable as we are. And in my experience, BitFocus Companion is not. And I've tried everything to try and fix this, enabling and disabling modules, enabling and disabling uh, specific devices, running the software on different computers, uh, completely blowing away the installation, starting over. I've tried everything at this point, and it just is cost constantly letting me down. So, anyway, let me know in the comments if whether this has been the situation for you, or whether the software has actually worked well for you. If you ever had, uh, let me know if you've had situations where it has crashed on you, or it has messed up in other ways that has caused you grief, and or even the loss of a paying client. So anyway, that's going to do it for now. I just wanted to put, the, put that out there and let people know. It's like, hey, if you're looking at this software and you are working for, client, for paid, paying clients, 
you might want to consider using something else instead of this because in my experience it's just not up to par it's not going to be something that you can trust something you can rely on when your the name of your company is on the line so anyway thanks everyone for watching and have a great day